Hi, best friends. My name is Brian Deach. I'm a solutions architect with Zscaler. And today we're going to talk about cloud browser isolation on the world's largest security cloud, Zscaler, aka the Zero Trust Exchange. So let's jump right into it. When we think about browser isolation historically, kind of simple. Come over here. We're going to say, hey, there's this thing called the Internet. We want to be able to protect the Internet. And maybe you want to isolate everything and maybe you don't. Historically, what we have seen is stuff like personal email, maybe newly registered domains, or uncategorized websites. When we started thinking about this from a user perspective, we want to be able to protect our users on the company-owned devices. Maybe they're working from anywhere. Maybe they're not. But the end result is we have the ability to kind of steer that traffic over into the isolation platform isolate that traffic, prevent that user from copying, pasting, downloading, printing, all the above. But the challenge with this is, what about stuff that was good yesterday and maybe it's bad today? And this is where we come into smart isolation. And really, what is smart isolation? It's, it's AI and it's ML-based learning on these destinations as well as the client behavior. And the goal is to help drive risk down without introducing any complexities and slowness. So take a website like maybe briandeach.com, a little WordPress site, but what would happen if the destination was starting to do weird things? Maybe can introduce some, some type of security issues, malware, who knows? Wouldn't it be kind of cool if your Zero Trust Exchange can identify that automatically with smart isolation in that same website that yesterday the user didn't have to get isolated is now being isolated. And that's really some of the behaviors of smart isolation. It's to dynamically score user behavior, destination behavior, and isolate that user. Now, the fun doesn't stop right there. You start to think about other cloud-based things that you have going on in your organization. It could be SaaS-based. Some of those SaaS-based applications could be Office 365, maybe Salesforce.com, yada, yada, yada. And as we kind of move from the work from anywhere person on a corporate owned device, like what would happen if you have an employee that has to approve someone's time off, maybe update something in Salesforce, it's Thanksgiving, they're not at home, they're using grandma's PC and it's BYOD, right? The, the benefit of SaaS is that it's kind of available anywhere but what we want to be able to do is to, number one, get traffic here somehow to be able to do inspection. And how do we do that? Well, we look at it from an identity proxy perspective. Be like, hey, you know what? You're coming from an unsanctioned device. Instead, when you do this, it's going to be kind of a two-way communication. Isolate that user because it's coming from a BYOD device. The end result is this user can interact with these applications but from a DLP perspective or data residency, you know that it stays where it belongs, over here and not on grandma's PC. Now, the last use case that I kind of drop over here is going to be from a vendor. We all know vendors, they don't like to have applications installed on their, their endpoint. So the end result is the same. We're going to be able to steer traffic over here, but specifically, what are they trying to get to? Now, this is where I'm going to come in and say, hey, maybe it's a private cloud. Maybe it's the data center. But the end result is we want to keep that user off the network. And we want to do cool things like isolate them. So let's say that you have like application one over here. Maybe it's web-based, HTML5, it doesn't really matter. Maybe you have this SSH server that, that they'll you know, be able to jump over here to patch management, whatever, or even RDP. The fact remains this, uh, the same. We want to allow this user to interact with these applications without putting them on to the network. And then furthermore, I can be like, hey, you know what? You can talk to application one. If it has PCI or HIPAA type of data, I can still isolate it, prevent that user from being able to take that information and download it over here. The last part that I can do is I can say I can support non-standard web protocols within a browser. So we call this privileged remote access, but the result is the same. Bring your own. Best Buy device with its own modern browser, you can allow that end user to interact with like SSH and RDP protocols without a client on there. And then on top of that, you can help isolate that. So you can give them the ability to access this stuff, but they can't copy and paste and print and whatnot. 
So at the end of the day, browser isolation is not just about the internet. It's about the internet, unsanctioned things, unsanctioned applications, unsanctioned users, devices, protecting SaaS, increasing agility, decreasing risk, and allowing your vendors to come in, access applications without actually putting them on the network. So I know what you're thinking, man, there's a lot of three-letter acronyms up here. I might have to rewind this YouTube video. Well, guess what? YouTube can't rewind. So you're just going to have to call me and we can chat about it. All kidding aside, reach out to me if you have any questions. I appreciate your time for watching. Thank you.